Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn McDonald and I'm here at New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. And today we're gonna to be talking to Alberto Amoretti about his film, Gore Jagan. Let's take a look at a clip from the film. Parce qu'il y avait un ami de Mustafa qui fêtait son anniversaire dans son appartement. Nous, on était dans la cuisine, c'est nous qui préparions le manger. Lui, il était dans le salon. Nous, quand on a entendu le, les bruits des jeunes de la quartier, et nous, on a sorti. Les gens, ils sont rentrés dans la maison. Ils ont attrapé Mustapha, ils ont tapé à Mustapha un peu, avant peu ce qui arrive. Quand plus, après, il est arrivé, il a attrapé Mustapha et notre, et notre ami. Wow. So hi, Alberto. Welcome. Thank you for having, thank you for coming to talk to us today. So tell us, how did this story come to you and what inspired you to, to make a film? Well, hello, everyone. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to showcase my work in these uh, beautiful uh, events. Uh, Gorjigan, uh, that means man, woman in the uh, wall of language. Um, it started in some years ago while I was uh, already in Senegal and uh, with um, Giovanni Hennine, that is a co-author of, uh, of the documentary, we were doing uh, another project, our previous project, that is a, a short doc series about migration between Senegal and Italy. And while we were there researching and uh, interview people, we understood how uh, migration was uh, an important issue also for the LGBT plus uh, community in, in Dakar. Mm -hmm. um, Dakar, that's uh, the capital of, uh, of Senegal, um, is, um, is a, a city where there, is, um, there are some activists that are still fighting for, um, uh, um, for the human rights of, uh, of the gay community. Uh, Senegal is uh, a country uh, where still now uh, being homosexual is uh, punished by law and also condemned by the society. Uh, and so we wanted to give uh, a voice to the activists and to the people that still uh, fight for, for, the light, for their right um, of love. And so we started collecting also this uh, experience, these testimonies, and uh, while we were uh, in, uh, in Morocco, we found another part of the project because uh, we understood that uh, many Senegalese uh, uh, gay men uh, fled the country, their own country, mm -hmm. and then they stopped in Morocco to ask for um, the international protection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The problem that we understood that also in Morocco, um, there were a big problem because uh, the, um, the request of uh, the international protect protection last many, many months, years. And uh, for many of these uh, gay men, the only option to survive during this period is, um, is prostitution. Mm -hmm. and, and so starting, uh, starting from Dakar, arriving to, to, to Marrakesh, uh, we started to um, creating the story of, uh, this, uh, of this community. Right, right. So tell me, how did you go about finding your subjects? I mean, Jamil and Falou, Mustafa, um, how did you, in the process of what you just discussed of their journey, at what point did you meet them and start to discuss their stories? Uh, for Jamil, uh, he's uh, running uh, this uh, association that is uh, an health um, association that helps people uh, with the HIV. So they help with um, giving information about the cure, about the prevention. And uh, we understood that also he was uh, giving help to uh, the people who uh, need legal advice, for example, when uh, uh, people got um, arrested because uh, with the accuse of, um, of being gay. And uh, while for the others, um, it was uh, some were presented to us by Jamil and the other was only by chance. We met them, uh, for example, in, Mar in Marrakesh, we, 
we we didn't have um, a, a research but while we were there we discovered this uh, reality and uh, we met these people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay and were there parts of this story that were you were not able to tell uh due to time in fact how long was the production process from the time you met them how much time did you spend with them tell us about what that engagement was like um the we started uh, with um, before uh, via um, via internet so we discussed about these themes uh, online with uh, some zoom or some skype at the, at, the, at the time and it was in uh, 2019 mm -hmm. and then we there was the, the covid so there was a moment that we were not sure we could uh, finish this uh, this project mm -hmm. but in the end uh, in the last years um this um, homo homophobic wave that hit the country um reached the is is apex in um in, in December 2021 when uh, the religious leader and some uh, political parties uh, in Senegal uh, tried to uh, up, um, to present um a law in uh, at the parliament uh, that uh, wanted to in increase the punishment the punishment for uh, um for the homosexuals because at the moment uh, um, the law the article in senegal states that uh, um, they um, they are called acts against nature so it's not really being homosexual that is punished but it's just the acts against nature mm -hmm. and they wanted to change this law to um to make oh, just being homosexual uh, the the, the crime mm -hmm. and so with this we we understood that it was important in this moment to finish this uh, documentary mm -hmm. and um and yes i uh, in the first idea of the of, of this documentary i wanted also to um in, interview uh, someone in uh, in italy or in uh, in europe that finally uh, got the international protection mm -hmm. and uh, paradoxically it was the most difficult part of uh, mm -hmm. of this project mm -hmm. because uh, all the guys that we interviewed um that we knew that uh, finally were safe and sound here in, mm -hmm. in europe mm -hmm. uh, they didn't want to uh, expose themselves they didn't oh, want to um, put their face uh, on, on camera mm -hmm. And uh, at, the, at the beginning, I was uh, a little bit uh, also angry about that because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't understand why these people that uh, were finally safe didn't want to um, expose themselves for the community. While in Senegal, there were people risking their life. Right. And, uh, and at the same time, they wanted to, to speak up and, and right. show, show their, their face and say, okay, that is wrong, we want to um better the situation make 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 better the situation but on the sec on second thought i understood that uh, um the people here that are now safe uh, they fought so much uh, to reach their own uh, uh freedom to, mm -hmm. to love and to be safe mm -hmm. they they didn't want to jeopardize what they finally uh, mm -hmm. got while on the other hand the the men the activists in uh, in senegal had nothing to lose so uh, it for, for them it was uh, the only solution try to um to find a better way for for the community and mm -hmm. for the future generations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i understand that does make sense that totally makes sense that they would want to you know really leave that behind you know and start their lives all over Afresh, yeah. I completely understand that. So, can you talk about the journeys of the men that were included in the film? How you saw their lives change, you know, them as people during the course of this process, and how maybe even how you take making this film inspired them in their lives to change and grow. As I told you, the situation got worse and worse. So mm -hmm. since the interview that we had with them the the situation in Senegal got worse mm. so as uh, uh, you can see in the documentary 
uh, at the end, also the activists that uh, wanted to stay in Senegal and fight uh, for the human rights of the community, at the end, they were um, obliged to uh, to leave the country mm -hmm. because uh, they were threatened, they were beaten, mm -hmm. uh, their houses uh, were uh, were destroyed. So, mm -hmm. at one point, uh, for them, the only solution was uh, to to flee the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did Why, this? In... Sorry, go ahead. Sir. No, yeah, also the for example, Fallu. Uh, that's um, the young man that we met in Marrakesh. He, he is still waiting for the international protection because uh, mm -hmm. uh, his request uh, for for the refugee status uh, was uh, put in, on standby because of the of the COVID. Mm -hmm. So he could mm -hmm. not uh, take a plane. So he's still waiting for for being relocated in uh, in another country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that in the film. Very good. Very good. So with all this going on, you know, while you were filming, was there any point that you felt your production was in danger of being shut down or anything like that? What kind of crew did you have while you were making the film? Uh, we are always uh, very light, so we um, also because uh, during our interview, I want to recreate like a more intimate situation. Mm -hmm. So we always are maximum three, me, my uh, DOP and, um, and, and the audio, and the audio man. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... Um, I never felt this uh, at the moment. When I was in Senegal, the situation wasn't yet uh, so bad. The uh, situation got uh, worse uh, after we we left uh, we left the, the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It's 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 something. It was very moving. The film. I found it very very moving, and you just were able to capture a lot of empathy you know, in talking with these men and spending time and sharing their stories. Can you tell us uh, how you changed during this process? What was what was your own personal emotional and arc and, and, and uh, how did you grow in during this process? Well, I uh, after shooting this documentary, I started to be uh, more even more grateful about uh, what uh, the community, the LGBT community, and in general, all the human rights movement uh, have achieved in, uh, in the Western countries. And, and to think that there are still in this world people that uh, must, uh, that they risk their life and uh, they could be uh, rejected by the families and lose their work for, their uh, sexual orientation mm -hmm. i think it's not uh, something that <laughs> is acceptable anymore right right so i i am more grateful and at the same time i, I realize how we must keep fighting for our rights and uh, we don't we never uh, have uh, mm -hmm. our uh, achievement given for granted because uh, all the rights that we got uh, and we have now, it was very, it, it was very, e it is very easy to take them away. So we we must keep fighting for us, for our rights, and also for the people of uh, other communities in, in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. And how do you hope that your film, this film, can play a part of that? I think that it is important, first of all, that the people know what is what is happening in Senegal, because it's, it's not so easy to get information from those countries. And, uh, um, and for what I also understood from showing my documentaries is that uh, people didn't know about this, about the situation. And uh, so, first of all, it is important that people know about the problems. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we will see what will happen. I, I hope uh, it will help. Of course, I, I don't think that my, my documentary will change the world, <laughs> but uh, I hope that uh, we will keep the spotlight on the problem and with time, uh, things will get better.
Yeah, I, I, I hope so. Absolutely. And uh, I personally would like uh, it to be shown everywhere because I didn't know uh, the degree that uh, the, the depth of the difficulty and, and danger going on there myself personally. So I do hope that uh, your film is screened. So tell us uh, where else can we see it besides NFMLA and, and uh, this wonderful festival? Uh, where in the future, where can we follow you and the film? Uh, at the moment, we are still um, showing the documentary in uh, in festival. So mm -hmm. we, we did uh, new filmmakers in uh, in LA, and uh, we uh, presented in uh, in Madrid, mm -hmm. uh, um, Le Gai Cinema. That's uh, an important uh, LGBT festival. And the last summer, we were in uh, Ostuni, uh, Puglia, in, in Italy, mm -hmm. at the Allora Festival. That uh, is a festival. Uh, uh, but it, it, it is a festival that um, this year had as a theme the human rights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good, very good. So where can we also follow you and your work coming up in the future? What else have you got uh, coming up down the pipeline that we can watch out for? We, uh, at the moment, uh, we, with Giovanni Hennion, my, my co-author, uh, we are, we are starting uh, we are starting working on uh, a project uh, um, between memory and architecture. So mm -hmm. it will be a, a doc series uh, about uh, how places change in uh, during the time and how they, the ideas of the architects change uh, with time and society. So how society and people living the, the spaces uh, adapt to architecture and also how change the, the architecture for their need. Wow, that sounds fantastic. I'm I'm a big fan and and uh, aficionado of architecture, so I really look at look uh, forward to seeing that one myself personally. Yeah, architecture is another theme that I I, I talk about uh, in in my work. Mm. Also, my uh, Giovanni Henny, that's a co author, it's uh, also um, photographic, uh, um, it's architectural photographer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, in uh, our um, uh, aesthetic, in the how we set, for example, also the interviews, mm -hmm. we always try to give uh, an architectural approach, let's say. So, we will, we, we try to. Uh, create a, a set for interviews that in which the space uh, tells something about uh, the the subject. Uh, so not only the words, but also the image. Uh, I think should tell something about uh, about the story that is, is being told. Actually, I want to circle back around to that. I noticed that in in the film in Guj uh, Jigan that the way you set up the, where the subjects were sitting, you always let us know their world. Like I, re I remember having them very centered in the frame and we got a lot of the background, you know, to give us a sense of that world. So yeah, that was really, really beautifully done, you know, and, give, and it gave us a flavor of their character as well. It definitely added to their character. Yeah, it, it's something that uh, I always do. I started mm -hmm. uh, doing this kind of... Uh setting for the interviews uh, since my first uh, experience as a, as a director. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was uh, a documentary about uh, um, a theater company here in mm. Milan mm. that investigates uh, um, in gender identities uh, mm. through, through the theater. So they use um, technique the, of theater mm -hmm. uh, to investigate uh, what is being a woman, what is being a man. And they do that, um, um, how do you say? Yes, <laughs> can, can I repeat it that? Sure. Okay, I, I, okay, because I, I missed the word, okay. Okay. Uh, the the question was about the setting. It was about so, yeah. I just was saying how I really saw what you um, how you shot the um, interviews, how they were centered in the frame, and how you know that gave us a sense of character and place. I started to create this kind of setting for the interviews uh, since my first uh, experience as a. Uh, um, documentary director, 
And uh, my first project was about a theater company here in Milano called Atopos. And uh, this uh, um, company um, uh, try to investigate uh, gender identities uh, using uh, uh, theatrical techniques. So how, uh, when I walk on the stage, how do I walk, how do I speak uh, to be seen and recognized as a woman or as a man? Mm -hmm. And for doing that, uh, they engage um, uh, transgender people that uh, uh, they do that every every day of their lives. So mm -hmm. I want to be recognized as a woman or as a man. So how do I have uh, um, move and speak mm -hmm. and uh, and use my voice and use my hands uh, and um, and for for this reason I wanted to uh, uh, create this set that could tell. Uh, in which the space could tell uh, more about uh, the, the subject, because uh, all the idea of the documentaries was uh, about uh, reality and uh, representation. Mm -hmm. So I wanted that the setting were like uh, small stages in which the uh, the subject could could uh, describe themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds fantastic! And where can we see that documentary? Uh, <laughs> it's not being distributed by I, I, I do sometimes some uh, events uh, mm -hmm. in the where there is a talk so I, I've been called by some association to to present these uh, documentaries in uh, in small spaces so to say okay all right great well thank you so much uh, for being here with us um Alberto, I really enjoyed talking with you about your film. I wish you the best of luck with it and uh, can't wait to see what else you've got coming up. Thank you, Caroline. It was a pleasure. Thank you.